Soviet Union, Nazi Germany, North Korea are three of history's most notorious police states. But today, I want to add a new country to that list, the United Police State of America. Let's go to my vigilant producer, Alex Logan, with some really startling facts. Alex. Hey, Governor. In June, the ACLU released its report, War Comes Home, the Excessive Militarization of American Policing, and their findings were shocking to say the least. They studied 800 SWAT deployments among 20 local, state, and federal police agencies in 2011 and 2012 to find that 79% of SWAT deployments were for, quote, the purpose of executing a search warrant most commonly in drug investigations, that's 62%. Only a small handful of deployments, 7%, were for hostage, barricade, or active shooter scenarios. So according to the LAPD website, SWAT responds to barricade slash hostage episodes and or suicide intervention, as well as initiate service of high risk warrant for all police department entities. Where does that 62% of responses for drug investigations fit into that, Governor? You know, we, we're fighting this war on drugs and this is some of the repercussions you're gonna see from it. You're gonna see our rights go down the toilet, you're gonna see them knocking doors down, all for the sake of busting drugs. To me, it's an unwinnable war because people are always gonna do drugs. They've always done them. Watch TV during the daytime and see how many legal drug commercials there are. So let's face it, we're a drug culture, but this war on drugs, it's having a negative effect from the far reaching of Central America, where we've got all of these kids at our borders now as a result of the drug war. Our prisons are filled with people because of drugs. But I heard the other day that we have more people in prison than China. We're supposed to be home of the brave, land of the free, but we seem to be locking up far too many people for what is a crime against oneself. Taking drugs is a crime against yourself, not anybody else. Go ahead, Alex. Well, according to this BBC study, yes, we have 2.1 million people in prison. China has 1.5. So we got them beat by a half a million. And then wow, some. that's really something that the United States ought to be proud of. Don't you agree? I know I feel a lot safer that we have the most people incarcerated in the world in what's supposed to be the biggest free country in the world. Am I missing the oxymoron here, Alex? Freedom and jail? How do those two go together? And back to this ACLU report, in cases in which police cited the possible presence of a weapon in the home as a reason for utilizing a SWAT team, weapons were found only 35% of the time. And then police successfully found illegal drugs at the same rate, 35%, when they suspected contraband was on the premises. Lastly, in the 1980s, local police SWAT raids numbered 3,000 each year. But today, it's over 50,000 a year. And by 2005, at least 80% of towns with a population between 25,000 and 50,000 had their own SWAT team. So what do you think is the government's incentive to arm their police forces to the teeth? Obviously, and I'm only spitballing here, but it looks to me, and, and in light of what happened at the Boston Marathon where the military was out on our streets, I think that we have a great preparation for martial law in this country. It seems we're prepared for it and they're ready to implement it at a moment's notice. And I'm trying to figure out why. Well, you may be bright, Governor. To answer that question, let's follow the money trail. Why do the feds want to militarize our police? Well, the National Review found that the feds issued a plethora of Homeland Security grants that encourage local police departments to buy surplus military hardware and form their own SWAT units. So if the war machine abroad can only be so extensive, why not roll out the tanks on our own soil, right, Governor? You know, that goes back to the last defense bill when uh, John McCain, Senator McCain and Senator Levin of Michigan put an amendment on that bill that it's now okay for the United States military to operate inside our borders. That's outrageous, and I tried to bring that to attention and got swatted down. No mainstream media wanted to even talk about it, and it passed right through, and the American people, half of them don't have any idea that the law of the land now is the U.S. military can chase you down the street with a tank. I mean, come on, people. Tiananmen Square, we all looked at it when it happened in China and we were aghast when it happened over there. What I'm hearing from you right now, Alex, is Tiananmen Square could soon be Times Square. You may be right.
It, because in 1997, Congress created the 1033 program with the motto, from war fighter to crime fighter, that allows the Department of Defense to funnel surplus military equipment at no cost. Since 2009, police departments have received tens of thousands of machine guns and 200,000 ammunition magazines. The feds funneled 4.3 billion of military property to law enforcement since the late 1990s, including 450 million in 2013. They're funneling all these machine guns and all this armament to the local police. I know why. I've been to the Republican and Democratic national conventions. You ought to see it there. SWAT teams all over the place, black helicopters flying all over. They're doing this to protect themselves, the Democrats and Republicans, before we rise up and overthrow them. Well, the ACLU published a 2004 classified memo that all but confirms the blurring of the lines between the drug war and the US military by calling the drug enforcement agency the other war fighter and stating that the war on drugs has all the risks, excitement, and dangers of conventional warfare. Excite excitement. Yeah, are they glorifying warfare, Governor? Listen to that, the excitement of it. So we don't have nobody to fight overseas. By God, we'll fight here at home. Let's get that scourge of drugs out there. There are thousands of de devastating, dangerous drugs out there that are legal. And there's huge profits being made off the illegality of these, legal, of these legal drugs. They market them, watch TV in the daytime. All you see are drug commercials. And yet, an organic plant like marijuana is illegal? Hmm. Well, the ACLU report is also punctuated throughout with horror story headlines from SWAT raids gone wrong. Here are just a few. SWAT officers kill 26-year-old mother holding infant son. Tarika Wilson wasn't the suspect. She died when SWAT officers broke down her front door and opened fire into her home. SWAT team shoots veteran 22 times. An Iraq war veteran went to investigate strange noises in his house with his rifle in hand. The SWAT team fired 71 shots, 22 of which entered his body and killed him. He died on the kitchen floor without medical attention. No drugs were found in his home. You know, it's sad, but you know what they'll determine? That was simply collateral damage. That's madness.